Welcome to the first video in our ANSYS Innovation course on material performance. Today, we'll be defining material performance and investigating how this can influence our material selection during product design. As I said in our introduction, material performance is something we experience every day. It's how material behaves once in service in a product. But how does this performance influence what material I choose for a specific product? Let's take a simple example, a dinner plate. It should hold the weight of my food during the duration of my meal. It can't react with my food. That wouldn't be very good. It needs to stand up to washing, preferably in a dishwasher. And it shouldn't break if I set it on the countertop a little bit too roughly, but it doesn't necessarily need to withstand a fall from my hands all the way to the floor. It's this material's properties, influenced by its structure and processing that dictate how it'll perform once it's been created into my dinner plate. As I said, this is a pretty simple example. Let's consider something more difficult, say this, a total hip replacement. The reason that this might be implanted is vast, from old age, a bad fracture, arthritis. Maybe you know someone in your family or group of friends who's need their hip replaced. I know I do. Whatever the reason, this hip implant must be able to withstand sufficient loads from the human body during activities such as walking. It must be corrosion and fatigue resistant. Fatigue meaning withstanding repeated loading. The cup and ball joint segment of the implant must provide low friction and low wear. If I'm having this implant put in because I lost my natural cartilage in my hip due to arthritis, I want to make sure that my new joint will move smoothly. And the body shouldn't react to these materials in any adverse way. Now, this is a much stricter, more complex set of requirements than for my dinner plate. And yet this is a product that's out in the world, used by many people every day with no issue. Let's go back to our simple example of a dinner plate. This one is made out of a ceramic material. Maybe you have a similar one at home. Is this the best material for this application? I could have made it out of lead. That would have held the weight of my food. But lead's toxic to humans. Not really ideal for my dinner plate. Could have made it out of silicone. Silicone's a material that's often used in the kitchen. For example, I have a set of silicone muffin cups. But silicone can be quite flexible. I don't really want a floppy dinner plate. I can make this plate out of gold. I don't really want to spend that kind of money on a dinner plate. If I'm manufacturing this plate, I want to make a profit. So I need to make sure that the material I'm choosing, its production costs, are low enough that I'm able to make a profit based on my target audience. Now, dinner plates are used, depending on the meal, all over the world. Is this the best material based on the local environment and economy? Could I be using a local material to make my dinner plates? There are so many different criteria that we need to consider when designing products that go beyond even how the material will technically perform once it's in my product. Now, the field of materials is vast. In the last 100 years, we've gone from around 100 engineering materials to tens of thousands. How do we as engineers and designers begin to think about materials in a useful way when thinking about material performance and selection? In the next video in this ANSYS innovation course, we'll be investigating material families as a way to break down the large field of materials into smaller, more manageable pieces. Again, my name is Dr. Caitlin Tyler, and thank you for joining me today.